July the 14th, 1984. 29 offshore power boats rocket off on the first leg of the toughest race in the world. Over 1,600 miles around the coast of Britain, a supreme test of men and machinery. The Class 1 boats, big and powerful. Italian Ego Lamborghini, 1,400 horsepower from turbocharged diesels. Favorite Renato della Valle driving. British Jaguar the Legend, 1,500 horsepower from turbo to Jaguar V12s. Driver Colin Gervais Brazier, a potential winner but reliability suspect. 45-foot catamaran Carlsberg, 2,000 horsepower in the hands of Ted Tolman. Calm weather will favor Carlsberg with her 95 miles an hour top speed. Another Britisher in with a chance. White Iveco, driven by designer Fabio Buzzi. More turbo diesels and 1,500 horsepower. Italian White Iveco is a serious challenger. The smallest boat in class one, 25-foot Laura Lucy, with only 520 horsepower from twin production Mercruiser stern drives. Driver Fiona, the Countess of Arran. Could have raced in the cruiser class, but opted for the top competition, Mercruiser reliability against brute power. Class 2, 28-foot Phantom Brutes, driven by husband and wife team Peter and Jan Armstrong, with hull designer Steve Baker. 450 horsepower from her three standard Mercury outboard challenged the 600 to 1,000 horsepower in six of the other seven Class 2 entries. The seventh Class 2 entry, First Aid, the smallest and lowest powered boat in the race. Her two standard 50 horsepower Mercury outboards left their packing cases only a week ago. Driver and navigator John Corcott and Graham Dillon must have total faith in Mercury performance and durability. Class 2 catamaran propeller shirts. Like their father, the Tillman twins have staked their hopes on two hulls. Two Mercruiser 400 horsepower stern drives give this 33-foot cat a 90 mile an hour potential in good conditions. Class 3 entries include Gina Campbell, who's following in the footsteps of her famous father, the late Donald Campbell, who died in his Bluebird attempting to break the world water speed record. Gina's 25-foot Agfa Bluebird is powered by twin standard Mercury 150 horsepower outboards. The most popular classes are those for production cruisers with production stern drives. The 11 cruiser entries include Puffer, a 29-foot gazelle driven by Philip Warner and powered by twin production 290 horsepower Mercruiser stern drives. Warner and his crew, which includes designer builder Jeffrey Hunton, know that reliability in rough weather can make them more competitive against much more highly powered boats. One of only two single-engine craft in this grueling race is Disprin, the fast one. Driven by Colin Stewart, this 25-foot plant craft Revenger relies on a single 370 horsepower Mercruiser stern drive. Ahead of the fleet, 1,600 miles round the coast of Britain. Day one, 190 miles to Falmouth. Day two, and a 185 mile crossing of the Bristol Channel. From Fishguard, another 144 miles to Douglas in the Isle of Man. And day four will be spent racing the 68 miles round the island. 182 miles to Oban, the first half of the race is over. The Caledonian Canal, then a day off in Inverness. The longest leg, 203 miles to Dundee. Leg 7, 172 miles down the east coast to Whitby. Leg 8, 165 miles of oil rig dodging to Great Yarmouth. Leg 9, 83 miles crossing the Thames estuary to Ramsgate. The final leg takes the fleet 129 miles along the south coast and back, at last, to Portsmouth. But as the fleet assembles in Portsmouth for scrutineering before the start, and as navigators make last-minute checks on courses, all the talk centres on the weather. In 1969, when the only previous round Britain race had been held, the weather had been gentle. But now, with only hours to go, the forecast promises winds of force 6 to 7, with large seas off the south coast. Although the start is delayed for one hour, most competitors are worried. The big boats will have a bad time, but will competitors like Gina Campbell in the smaller boats get to Falmouth at all? 
In fact, it's Gina Campbell's act for Bluebird, which was one of the early retirements. Bluebird is swamped off Anvil Point and limps into Weymouth. She's just one of many boats which will make their way to Falmouth by road. Despite the conditions, John Corcott and Graham Dillon in the tiny first aid are determined to make it. Determination isn't enough to keep big and beefy in the race. She retires back to Portsmouth just after the start. Peter Penn's cruiser, Henderson for Doors, keeps going. But in these conditions, it's a slow, slow ride. Only 19 of the 29 starters complete this leg. Colin Curran's cruiser, Red Rum, is forced to retire and travels by road to Inverness. Best class two boat on this leg is double two shirts. Reveling in the rough condition, she produced an average speed of nearly 34 knots. Even faster with an average of 45 and a half knots is Ego Lamborghini. And Brute isn't hanging about either. Ted Tolman's aim is to get the Carlsberg catamaran to Falmouth in one piece. But double two shirts is pushing hard to challenge the Italians. Falmouth is the target for the depleted fleet, for which the 190 miles had been a real test of reliability and endurance. 19 boats make it to the finish line off Pendennis Point, but for some this has meant more than eight and a half hours battling with rough seas. First British finisher is Colin Gervais Brazier in the legend, but this team has to settle for third place behind White Iveco and Ego Lamborghini. These two Italian boats have started in the most convincing way possible, finishing first and second and over half an hour ahead of the legend. Carlsberg comes in nine minutes astern in fourth place, but the Tolman team are happy just to finish the leg. Day two, and 185 miles to Fishguard. Again, the weather dominates. The 22 starters on this leg soon discover that the Northwesterly Force 5 has kicked up rough seas, causing problems for many as they battle along the southwest coast towards Land's End. Some of the teams have worked all night repairing the damage done yesterday, and now they're facing even larger seas and a dauntingly long offshore leg around the rocky corner of England and across the open waters of the Bristol Channel. Despite her size, the legend is looking like a victim of the weather. And Carlsberg is having real problems in wave conditions that certainly don't suit her design. And Colin Gervais' Brazier's hopes for an overall win are receding fast. Broken down, he retires to St. Ives. But the 28-foot Brute is still pounding along in the mountainous seas off Land's End, about to pass the longship's lighthouse. Her performance yesterday has put this Mercury outboard-powered Class 2 boat into sixth place overall. Cruiser Power Disprin, the fast one, is another boat which seems at home in these conditions. On the first leg, she'd been ninth overall, and now she's moving up to seventh. But for Carlsberg, the race is about to end. 18 miles off St Anne's Head, she's swamped by a large wave and sinks within minutes. Ted Tolman and his crew are picked up by helicopter and taken straight to hospital, all unhurt but somewhat shaken. Of the 22 starters, only 12 make it to Fishguard. Again, the weather has taken its toll. And people, as well as boats, are suffering. Sue Griffith and husband Richard, racing on Everest forever, had pushed hard to finish seventh on this leg. But Sue's back was damaged by the constant pounding. And for her, the race is over.
After these two punishing legs, even those boats who finished unharmed need a thorough check and a few adjustments to try and secure just that bit more speed. Bad weather has increased the time spent at sea and so reduced the time available for maintenance. But Mercury outboards and Mercruiser stern drives are proving their reliability. And not just the main engines, but auxiliaries too. And that's good news when, like Colin Stewart in Disprin, you're powered by a single engine. In the Ram Britain race course, it's different. You've got to have an extra engine in case things go wrong. So there, if you look at the back of the boat, we have our extra engine, which is a 9.8 horsepower Mercury. I won't say slung on the back. It has been said it was slung on the back, but that is a, a very reliable little engine because after the two legs that we've done so far, uh, Mike has got in the back there, started it up, and much to my amazement, it is gone on both occasions. <laughs> but it does in fact propel the boat uh, fast enough for us to make headway in, in a, a normal sea condition and you can bring it alongside and so on. One pair who've had a rough ride in their pint-sized first aid are John Corcott and Graham Dillon. A bit of heavy going yesterday. We certainly did. We had our fair share of uh, bumps and humps. I think I, here you actually left the boat. Yeah, just past the land's end overfalls where it really got heavy. We dug the nose in, the boat spun out. We flew out over the back. On the back. We managed to get back in the boat, obviously. Yes, yeah, so you have these dead man cutouts here, you see, around your, around your wrist. And when they pull out, the engines automatically cut. We didn't, want, we didn't want the boat to go on without us. The three standard 150 horsepower Mercury outboards powering Brute have helped to put a second in class two. The Armstrongs and Steve Baker in their 28-foot Phantom are already promising to be a serious threat to many of the larger and more powerful boats. The third leg and it 144 miles to Douglas on the Isle of Man. As the now diminished fleet sets off, the weather decides to smile. A relatively gentle northwesterly force 3 to 4 together with a calm sea allows faster speeds on this leg and ends the casualty list. On this leg, all of the 16 starters make it to the finish line off Central Promenade at Douglas. Even Jaggy with a legend, which had arrived at Fishguard in the early hours after a trip by road, is able to start within the time limit. She returned to port to complete repairs, but finished the leg to Douglas in the fastest time of all. After two days of severe weather for the powerboat racers, these lighter conditions came as a welcome relief to bruised bodies and battered brains. No one had really expected such tough conditions, and for many of them, early damage has forced their early retirement from the first half of the race. But for the Italians, there's no thought of retirement as they continue to dominate this event. White Iveco, with her 1,600 horsepower, again leads the field as she powers into Douglas at an average speed of just under 50 knots. And that other Italian Class 1 boat, Ego Lamborghini, is, as usual, in close attendance, only three minutes astern of her compatriot. Her 1,400 horsepower gives her an average speed of 46 knots. Although the legend finally completed this leg in a time 11 minutes faster than the winner, the only British successes that the spectators have to celebrate are in the smaller classes. Everest Forever comes in fifth, and the single Mercruiser Power Disprin seventh. Laura Lucy, also relying on Mercruiser Power, moves up to fourth in class one. An incredible result considering her lowly 520 horsepower. And for Brute, with her Mercury outboards, another good result, sixth on this leg. First Aid's crew also have a lot to be pleased about. Corcott and Dillon have finished all three legs, a remarkable achievement in a 20-foot boat powered by only two standard Mercury 50-horsepower outboards. And they haven't been last on any leg. When First Aid lies alongside other boats in the fleet, it becomes obvious just how tiny she is and how tough her crew need to be to complete the race. The Tillman twins in propeller shirts have also done well to survive conditions that don't suit their catamaran. They now lie 11th overall and 3rd in class 2. Day 4 and 68 miles around the Isle of Man. Again, the weather is kind to the fleet on this leg, the shortest of the entire race. 17 starters, one more than the previous day, give the spectators an exhibition of high-speed powerboat racing. 
Ted Tolman is back in the race on this leg, driving Ego Lamborghini for Renato Della Valle, who's injured his wrists in the earlier rough weather. The start is about the only time that Thursday can be ahead of the fleet, but she's soon left in the wakes of her far more highly powered competitors. Even on this simple leg, navigation is important, and the legend shows how it should be done as she sweeps through the calf of man at 80 miles an hour. She's well in the lead, with the Italians for once safely astern. And the Mercruiser-powered catamaran propeller Schertz is also reveling in the calm conditions for which this Class II boat has been designed. Philip Warner's Mercruiser-powered puffer is pushing hard, chasing the single Mercruiser engine Disprin, the fast one. The spectators certainly have plenty to watch, not least first aid taking an even shorter route inshore. This amazing little boat is still not at the back of the fleet and completes this leg at an average speed of 33 knots. Michael and Gary Tolman's faith in their catamaran propeller shirts is well justified as they sweep into Douglas to a very creditable third place behind the legend and White Iveco. The other Mercury and Mercruiser powered boats are also doing well. Laura Lucy is sixth, with Brute just behind in seventh place. Leading cruisers are Disprin, ninth, and Puffer coming in tenth. Leg five, and the last one heading north. Only another 182 miles through the Scottish islands and highlands to open. At the start, the weather is poor with fairly rough seas. But by halfway, the sky clears and the wind drops to give some of the best conditions of the whole event. Once again, it's the legend out in front, with White Iveco, that powerful Italian machine, never far behind. This is certainly the day of the British. Double Two Shirts pushes Ego Lamborghini out of third place, while the Mercury-powered Brutes, the small class two boat of the Armstrongs, puts in an impressive performance to finish in fifth place and move up to fifth overall and first outboard boat. These three 150 horsepower Mercury's just aren't missing a single beat. And neither is the single Mercruiser stern drive in Disprin. She finishes in seventh place for an overall position of sixth. Propeller Shirt's two Mercruisers push her to eighth place on this leg. Despite conditions still not suiting catamarans, she's lying eleventh overall. The twin 290 horsepower Mercruisers on Puffer drive her to ninth position on this leg. This result moves her up to eighth overall and first in class. After nearly 800 miles in a real mixture of weather, Mercury outboards and Mercruiser stern drives are still showing total reliability. Laura Lucy's Mercruiser power takes Lady Aaron to tenth at Oban. So, in the first half of this gruelling race, Mercury and Mercruiser engines have acquitted themselves well. 
There have been no problems at all for the Mercury support team, organised by the UK distributor, Sir Wester, and run by marketing director, John Buck. We're about halfway around the course, and uh, just sorting out a few bits of replacement parts on general service uh, replacement parts for the boats that have come in so far. And as you know, tomorrow they're going through the canal to Inverness, and then we, we start down the eastern legs back to Portsmouth. Logistically, it's been uh, quite a big problem to provide uh, the backup support vehicles for uh, the 10 Mercury outboard and McCruiser stern drive boats in the race because you can't get every truck going to every port of call. So we have to have two teams on the road leapfrogging from port to port uh, or alternate ports to port and then meeting up at Inverness and then leapfrogging on the way back to Portsmouth. So we've got about 400 uh, part numbers on the truck basically because uh, out of all the Mercury outboard and McCruiser entrants in the race, we've altercated for nine different models relative to the different classes that are competing in the, in the event. Basically what we do at each port of call, as each boat comes in, we say, have you had any problems? Uh, if they have, we find out what it is, and then we get our engineers down to help them uh, sort out any problem. But uh, touch wood, we haven't had too many to date. So they haven't been working all night yet then? No, we haven't been working all night, so unlike some, some crews, so uh, hopefully we don't have that to come and uh, we'll have a plane sailing back to Portsmouth. Day six, a non-racing leg, up to Fort William and through the Caledonian Canal to Inverness. Last night's party celebrating Lady Aaron's 66th birthday continues. Happy birthday! <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> We've drunk it all. Have you drank it all? Yep. John? Then on through the series of locks, a lengthy business taking literally hours. <laughs> And bursts of speed through the locks, Loch Ness in this case, where the cruisers are playing. While some teams take the canal route, others put their boats on trailers. The cruise to Inverness hasn't been without incident. Minster Heatwave needs an engine change after losing oil pressure during the passage of the canal, and Everest Forever is in the same trouble. She blew an engine on the way to Oban. Night work for these two and others. So, major overhauls and engine replacements for some of the teams, and the rest day in Inverness is needed before starting off south. For the Mercury support team, it's only a matter of checking and servicing their charges. But is the lack of work for the Mercury mechanics due to the smaller boats taking it easy? <laughs> no, we just plan to, to keep going and we're driving the boat as hard as we can. And we're not, we haven't been taking it easy at all. And the only way to keep up the minimum average speed and to get a place is just to drive the boat as hard as we can. And so far we've been lucky. Our Mercury engines haven't missed a beat. And so far everything's hanging in fine. Yes, you ought to point out you'll really have a very small horsepower compared with any other boat. Tiny, the next slowest horsepower boat is two and a quarter times what we've got. But we've got basically bog standard Mercury ski engines. And it even hand start. Yeah. Hand start, yeah. We like the hand start bit. <laughs> and, you know, our motto is the less complicated the better. I and mean, the, the engines are totally untuned, so there's theoretically very little to go wrong with. As the fleet leaves Inverness on the way to the start of leg six, the drivers know that there are still 760 miles to go to the finish and that one error or breakdown can put pay to all the hard work and effort on the way north. 
Portsmouth is a long way away, and reliability on the last five legs will be vital. But for now, they need to worry only about the next leg, 203 miles to Dundee. Laura Lucy going well to make eighth place on this leg. While up ahead, Italian Ego Lamborghini is chasing the legend and Whitey Vaco. Agfa Bluebird is back in the race for the first time since leg two and going well to finish in 11th place. Well up with the leaders early on is Propeller Shirts. But after sustaining hull damage, she almost sinks and is kept afloat by a line from a helicopter. For Brute, this is to be the best performance so far. She'll be fourth on the leg, move up to third overall, as her arch-rival Double Two Shirts is forced to retire. Spectators in the Tay River at Dundee are treated to the closest finish of the entire race. Throughout the leg, White Iveco, Ego Lamborghini and the legend have battled for the lead, often running neck and neck at top speed. At the finish, it's the legend who takes her third win in a row. She wins by just nine seconds, despite blowing an engine right on the line. Second is White Iveco with Ego Lamborghini another 16 seconds behind. On this leg, First Aid moved up to third in class two, and Disprin with her single Mercruiser engine improved to fifth overall. Leg seven is to prove painful to Gina's sprained ankle, but Keith Schellenberg's Mercury-powered Isle of Egg ferry is to have her best result to date. And of course, First Aid will be there at the finish. The legend is going for a fourth win, but Fabio Buzzi's White Iveco is by now the firm favourite. For Puffer's crew, the question is, can they hold on to first position in the popular cruiser class B? Dundee to Whitby. 172 miles, but thankfully the weather is calm. Disprin is soon pushing her single 370 horsepower Merc cruiser to the limit. She's sixth on this leg, moves up to fourth overall and becomes the leading cruiser. First aid moves up to third in class two. And Laura Lucy with only 520 horsepower improves her position to ninth overall and third in class one. And the fleet arrives in the Yorkshire fishing town of Whitby. The leg is won by the seemingly unstoppable White Iveco at an average speed of 70 knots. The other Italian class one boat, Ego Lamborghini, is second. And these two high-powered boats are now well clear of the rest of the fleet. Gervais Brazier's hopes have been dashed. The legend has had to retire. No trouble for the Mercuries. Brute finishes fourth, remaining the leading outboard and class two boat. And Keith Schellenberg is well pleased with his twin Mercury 200 horsepower outboards. The Isle of Egg ferry has finished a highly creditable third. The Laird of Egg is delighted. In fact, Mercury engines seem to have many admirers in Whitby. But now the question is, what can stop the charging Italians? White Iveco and Ego Lamborghini are safely in first and second places, more than eight and a half hours ahead of the rest of the fleet. In third place is Brut, a brilliant performance from a class two boat with less than a third of the power of the larger machines. Gina Campbell's Agfa Bluebird is still in the race and so incredibly is Propeller Shirts. The Tolman twins and their backup team have worked all night repairing the hull damage. Leg eight and 165 miles among sandbanks and oil rigs to Great Yarmouth. Yet again, the weather is being kind with a flat calm to speed the fleet on its way down the east coast. And immediately, White Diveco pulls out an early lead, closely followed by Ego Lamborghini. The Legends crew are intending to make up for their retirement on the previous leg, and the Isle of Egg Ferry is looking for another good result. 